I'm going to I'm going to break ranks a little bit uh kicking this show off. Um first of all, I just want to thank everyone watching and listening live. Um uh, the Globusters would be nothing without the real people who tune into our weekly show in order to share ideas, hear and consider opinions which may or may not always align to our own views, but um I also want to thank all of the people who are watching and listening on the archive even if it's 10 years from today. Um Flat Earth is the most important revelation of our generation and probably the most important revelation in the last few hundred years if not of all time. Um uh, we should feel extremely lucky to be living in such a time where the truth about our world has the opportunity to catch hold or to, to catch on. Um uh, in contrast to the 19th and 20th centuries where really brilliant people figured out the truth about the flat earth for example Dr Robotham wrote Zetetic Astronomy although the ability for such staggering information to ignite and spread was simply not available uh i i submit were the internet around in its current form in the 1860s we'd be over 150 years into flat earth natural science and who knows what sort of uh, utopian world we'd be living in now there are immortal inimical entities who come from the form of uh, or who come in the form of royal old money bloodlines who are bent on controlling the world through sigil magic for example cash as well as subliminal programming in the form of the mainstream media cinema news political false dichotomies like republican and democrat a fallacious educational system uh which trains youngsters to become slaves to an oppressive debt-based system let's not forget scientism which has convinced the entire world the most absurd postulation which involves the world being a spinning sphere in space um we need to burn fossil fuels to have energy which is a blatant greedy lie motivated by uh, greed at least as well as preposterous theories like evolution which has no supporting evidence to speak of and of course the big bang infinite universe theory which has been solidified as concrete fact in the minds of the entire world practically ultimately to position us as an insignificant speck of dust in the infinitely expanding universe theory which is indeed the root cause of atheism nihilism and all sorts of psychological problems uh with uh, simply being completely absorbed in a fictitious version of reality now in this fictitious version of reality which is the globe it allows the so-called illuminated elite controllers of the world uh to use this uh fact against us this fictitious version of reality against us to an unbelievably profound extent uh flat earth truth again is the most powerful antidote to the corporate fascist world government which is already in place sort of in a beta state complete with their centralized world bank modeled after the usury illegitimate illegal federal reserve scandal of america Now, when the world becomes completely aware of the lies of scientism and theoretical physics, which one day that will come, uh there will be a paradigm shift so profound that it would be more disruptive to the status quo than a hypothetical moderate meteor strike or moderate nuclear bomb attack. Of course, neither of those could possibly have occur occur in reality, but when the stationary plane earth is finally realized and accepted as obvious fact, the social repercussions would be orders of magnitude more powerful than any war, cataclysm or some other sort of revelation. Now, the so-called elite interests that I've been speaking of do not want the status quo affected as a small group of people control about 99% of the wealth, real estate, physical assets and businesses of the world. Uh because flat earth truth is such a grave threat to their status quo, we should absolutely expect to see agent provocateurs inserted into the flat earth community which it is indeed a community in order to divide the grassroots movement into opposing factions or opposing camps which will eventually be used to nullify uh, one another or cancel each other out ultimately you know you'll see the flat earth movement self defeat itself 
from within if these plans come to fruition. Now, at that point, if the Flat Earth movement self-destructs from within, uh, at that point, when the grassroots movement is in shambles, uh, there will be sort of a corporate fascist Flat Earth anti-authority set up to commandeer or co-opt the truth movement claim it's been debunked and then our grandchildren are learning about how fast they're spinning around you know orbiting the sun now they in quotes have been controlling populations for many many generations now of course it's not the same people who are uh, immortal but their ideologies their goals and methods remain immortal preserved through their bloodlines and ritualistic secret societies some examples would be the Jesuits, the Freemasons, the Illuminati, Talmudic Zionists, the Knights Templar, and zillions of the offshoots like the KKK, the Order of the Dragon, you know, way back from the Crusades. But uh, such groups are innumerable, and they, you know, secretly have 50-year and 100-year plans, which are obviously not carried out by one single person or even one single generation of people. Uh, these very entities are responsible for fomenting the French Revolution, the American Revolution, the American Civil War, both world wars, and of course the never-ending state of war that we find ourselves ensnared within today in the post-9-11 century, just as they planned and laid it out in the infamous document Rebuilding America's Defenses by the ultra-conservative policy-making entity PNAC, or Project for a New American Century, a full year prior to the uh, false flag 9-11 attacks. Now, the point is here, while we the people outnumber them the, about 100,000 to one easily, our forebears have allowed these ancient bloodlines to reinsert themselves into positions of power and influence. Now, they certainly have a plan to quash the Flat Earth community and the Flat Earth movement. However, we must not allow ourselves to be divided by psychopathic, manipulative agent provocateurs. Now, just a quick FYI, agent provocateur literally is defined as a noun, a person who induces others to break the law so that they can be con uh, convicted. Now, this is sort of an old school, you know, general definition, and I would submit that it could entail people who insert themselves into a grassroots movement, gather a following in order to begin inserting uh, certain ideologies into their narrative. Um, they will appear to be genuine people of the grassroots movement. They will usually appear to be the most prominent figures within that movement. Uh, an example in, in the history past would be Gloria Steinem, who created Miss Magazine during the women's uh, liberation movement, although uh, Miss Steinem is an admitted CIA asset and was operating as such for the duration of Miss Magazine, which was heavily influential on young women during the women's liberation movement. Now, not to get off on the tangent of women's rights, but the government had a 50 or 100 year plan to break up the family unit itself, uh, and this was a long-term concise plan. In, in a quick summary, that plan involved doubling the tax revenue. This was achieved by convincing women that they shouldn't be at home taking care of the children and of the house while the man is out there earning money. Uh, they were convinced somehow to want to work, which I agree, everybody should have a choice and a right to work regardless of gender. Uh, but what the innocent victims of the co-opted women's liberation movement didn't realize was that they were falling right into the snare of this 100-year plan, which had been in place literally for decades and decades prior to the 60s. Now, by convincing women to demand the right to work, not only did they double the workforce, which naturally means cheaper labor based on the fundamental principle of supply and demand, and simultaneously doubled the number of tax-paying workers for the government's revenue stream. Furthermore, with both parents gone to work in order to pay for a lifestyle which was once achievable with a single income, uh, the children are forced into school at around age four or five. Now, fast forward from the 60s to 2017, and about half of the children in the, at least the U.S. grow up in broken homes with a single parent or even two parents working two jobs each so that they barely do so much as eat dinner once or twice a week together. So the children are indoctrinated as early as possible into the lies of scientism, but more profoundly, they are indoctrinated to see the state or the federal institution educational system as their major authority, hence losing respect for their actual parents. As the old parable goes, you can't serve two masters. Now, 
the plans which the Illuminati laid out many decades ago have come to full fruition in terms of breaking up the family, taxing us to death, and forcing our children into indoctrination during the most important formative years of their lives. With all that being said, does anyone expect this highly motivated, well-funded, powerful and organized group of ancient tacticianers uh, who are used to controlling populations, do you really think they're just going to let Flat Earth go on unchecked? Of course not. There are definitely going to be agent provocateurs, uh, perhaps a new flavor of, of agent provocateurs, but the same tactics are used only in a virtual sense rather than a physical sense. Although we still see, you know, agent provocateurs using physical uh, uh, tactics like in Occupy Wall Street or block, uh, Black Lives Matter protests where citizens are, you know, peacefully expressing their right to protest, then steps in a few dozen agent, a few dozen agent provocateurs. Uh, turns a thing into a violent mob, which, uh, you know, that can easily be achieved by just a few dozen uh, motivated individuals inciting violence, rioting, and looting in a large group of people. Uh, their actions will cause a chain reaction, which is a natural phenomenon of crowd behavior, although that's another topic altogether. Now, in the Flat Earth Movement, whenever you hear someone saying things like, this is a leaderless movement, but I'm the leader of the movement, or there's no such thing as a flat earth community, but I want to develop a platform where flat earthers can come together and talk about flat earth and discuss our views and different topics as a group about flat earth. Or flat earthers who say flat earthers who monetize their videos are not credible and they're just doing flat earth stuff for the money, which is ridiculous. Or uh, if you hear people say, we need to stand united as a community, then begin to ostracize individuals in the Flat Earth community. Uh, so these are the sorts of things we need to watch out for. Uh, we also need to be wary of people who are dishonest and are found to be dishonest, compulsive liars, even if their lies don't necessarily pertain to the Flat Earth. Uh, the best way to destroy the Flat Earth movement is to invent a leadership role, which is ridiculous, and supplant some cult of personality into this leadership role, who will ultimately discredit the Flat Earth truth by proving to be either untrustworthy or a non-credible source of information. Uh, flat Earth, I'm sorry, but it belongs to everyone. The world belongs to each and every person equally, just as the truth belongs to everyone equally. Nobody can patent the truth and claim royalties on other people's dissemination of the truth. Now, as much flack as we get as flat earthers, I feel like the Globusters is among the, among the most open, honest, credible, and welcoming segment of the flat earth community, which is why I've stuck around with you guys for so long, as, you know, we're simply after the truth. We want to hear everyone's thoughts, views, and opinions, even if we don't necessarily agree with them all, you know, all the time. Um, we can all stand on common ground, literally common ground at least, that the world is not a spinning sphere. Now, that is the main differentiation between flat earthers and everyone else. Uh, sure, within the flat earth cross-section of the population, we're going to have disagreements. We're going to have debates, talks, and maybe even play the role of devil's advocate to help our fellow flat earthers hone their arguments. Um, one thing we will never do, or I will never do personally, is ostracize fellow flat earthers because I disagree with them on menial issues. Uh, we may argue, and the arguments may get heated, even hypothetically, but at the end of the day, we're all on the same team here. Anyone who has the gumption to come out in public and stand up for what they know to be right, in spite of the personal adverse repercussions, will always be held in a special regard, in my opinion. Um, we definitely need to stand unified, however, on common ground, lest we be divided and conquered, which is the oldest and most effective method in the playbook of our adversary, who represents deception, evil, and disharmony. In order to fight against this adversary, we must stand together as one unit, and we simply cannot fight evil with evil. We cannot fight fire with fire, and you cannot fight disharmony with disharmony. Uh, it is my personal mission, even if I'm just speaking for myself here, to bring truth and light to as many people as possible. I certainly have no intentions of making enemies with anyone, even globetards, and especially not fellow flat earthers. Uh, 
with that being said, we, we really must watch out for people claiming to be flat earthers, yet continuously driving wedges between segments of the flat earth community, and then scoff at the idea of a flat earth community. Uh, we need to watch out for flat earthers who speak the well-known, well-publicized, moderately accepted facts about flat earth, but appear to be motivated by greed or posturing themselves as a dogmatic leader in a grassroots movement that has no room for a leader. Now, I would say that with one exception, uh, the creator of all things, the world, the celestial mysteries, the possible frontier, and the beautiful mystery of life is in control of everything, including this movement. Now, whether you adhere to scripture or not, uh, certainly no one can deny that the greatest deception of all time known to us is being revealed to the world before our very eyes. Now, not only the deception involving the flat earth, but deceptions running through all gambits of things dating back through history right up to current events today that are being revealed to new people daily. Um, this truth movement is strong, but it does have its weaknesses, and the weaknesses appear to involve the egos of people who claim leadership status of the community or the, those who claim that there is no community yet claim leadership status over the congregation of flat earthers who are you know congregating around them well i don't know what you would call that other than a community but uh some of these flat earthers behave more like globe earth minions than they do flat earth truthers at the end of the day we can only win this battle with love truth and light everything else is playing the adversary's game which you will never win the only way to win a game of evil deception and disharmony is to not play the game and to use light, harmony, and righteousness. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video presentation. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the video, and share it on your favorite social media sites. There's a lot more to come, so stay tuned, and we'll see you back next time.